What's going on guys? The Comics Kid 2099 here. Welcome to day 63 of the 365 day graphic novel review challenge. Today I want to talk to you about yet another Superman origin story. Superman Secret Origin written by Jeff Johns with art by Gary Frank. Let me go ahead and talk about Gary Frank's artwork real quick. It is phenomenal. I have loved Gary Frank's art since I first discovered it, I think in Batman Earth 1. Uh, his work here is absolutely beautiful. Uh, he makes Superman look more like Christopher Reeve than any other artist that I have I've ever seen. And maybe other artists aren't trying to make Superman look like Christopher Reeve, but Gary Frank really pulls it off. There are scenes in this book where he just captures the emotions, uh, the physical look of Christopher Reeve. It looks really incredible. Uh, if anything, I would say you should buy this book just to look at the artwork. And usually, I'm more of a story guy, but the artwork here is absolutely gorgeous. It is definitely worth the price of admission. Uh, now, having said that, the story is pretty good. Uh, that may sound a little lukewarm, but I feel like at a certain point you start hitting a series of diminishing returns on these Superman origin stories. Especially, like me, right now, where I'm reading all these origin stories back to back over the span of a week, you start to feel like you've been there, done that. This story hits some of the same notes that some of the other stories do. You start off in Smallville, you have Clark Kent trying to figure out what his place in the world is going to be, he's struggling with his budding superpowers, and then he comes to Metropolis and he's still trying to figure out what his place in the world is going to be. Lex Luthor turns the people of Metropolis against Superman, and then by the end of the story, everyone loves Superman, and he's a hero for the city. Uh, we've seen all of these elements before in other versions of the story. Uh, Birthright also had Lex Luthor turning the people of Metropolis against Superman. So, I feel like even though I enjoyed this story, and I don't have any real complaints about this story, I feel like I also don't have anything really positive to say about it either. I think that if we didn't have Burns Man of Steel, or Wade's Birthright, or or Jeff Loeb's For All Seasons, if we didn't have all of those stories, this would have blown everyone's mind. People would have absolutely lost their brains over this story. People would be saying like, oh, this is taking our childhood aspects of Superman and modernizing it for the present day. And it is doing that, but we've also seen that happen in three or four other Superman origin stories. So it's really hard for me to get excited about this when I've seen a lot of this stuff play out in slightly different ways in some of the previous origin stories. Uh, now, there are a few things that are different about this that aren't in the other origin stories. Uh, Jeff Johns restores the idea that uh, Superman, when he was a boy, was part of the Legion of Superheroes. Uh, that wasn't in Burns' version or Wade's version or uh, Jeff Loeb's version. And then uh, we also get uh, some new ideas that I don't think I've seen anywhere before. For example, the idea that the Daily Planet was on its last legs when Clark comes to Metropolis. Uh, that's a really interesting idea because in all the other versions of the story that I've seen in comics and in other media like uh, the movie or Lois and Clark or the animated series, uh, the Daily Planet is always like the biggest newspaper in the world and in this it's pretty much on the brink of destruction and I really like that idea. I like the reason that that's in this story and I like that uh, Jeff Johns is able to make it work. And also another new element in this that's not in any of the other versions of Superman's origin that I've seen is that the people of Metropolis are kind of awful people. At one point, Lois Lane describes Metropolis as a dog that is weighed down by the weight of the fleas on it. And the people of Metropolis are the fleas just trying to suck the city dry. Uh, I really like that description of this city, and it definitely works in the context of this book. Now, it is a little weird when you haven't really seen this city be portrayed that dark and that realistically or I should say that cynically, ever before. Uh, in almost every other Superman story I've read, uh, Superman and the city of Metropolis are not portrayed that cynically. And I should say that Superman himself is not portrayed cynically, but the people of Metropolis are. And that's a little weird to see, because you don't see that very often, but I think that Jeff Johns makes it work. Uh, he makes Superman's purpose in this story not just to save lives, but to try and turn people's lives around. Uh, at the beginning of this story, before Clark goes in uh, to meet everyone at the Daily Planet, he actually accidentally bumps into a woman, and she's just really mean to him and just really hateful. At the end of the book, we get to see that Superman's presence in this city has turned everything around. People are no longer mean to each other. Uh, they're no longer seeking to just look out for themselves. And we get to see that metaphor literalized in the form of Parasite, who, uh, uh, yeah, there he is. Uh, he's right there on the back of the book. Parasite shows up in this book, and it's a little on the nose whenever Lois is talking about how that guy is willing to suck everyone dry, and he's a parasite, wink, wink, and then we actually get to see him become the parasite 
It's a little on the nose, like I said, but it works in the context of this metaphor that Jeff Johns is working with. Uh, so overall, do I recommend this story? Yes. I think that it is a very fun story, especially if you haven't read any of the other Superman origin stories, or if it's been a really long time since you've read any of the other Superman origin stories. Unfortunately for me, since I'm kind of barreling through all of these Superman origin stories back to back, it was difficult for me to truly appreciate this for what it is. And I think in a few years, after I've kind of distanced myself from some of the other Superman origin stories, I may be able to come back to this and I may be able to appreciate it a lot more than I did now. That's not to say that it's a bad story. It's not. It's a really good story. It's just difficult for me to separate it from all of the other Superman origins that I've been reading over the last few days. Uh, so those are my thoughts on Superman Secret Origin. I liked it. I think you guys will as well. And I uh, hope that you guys liked this video. And if you did, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I will be back tomorrow with a different kind of video. In the meantime, you guys have a great rest of the day. Catch you later.